welcome you um, to our um, governing board meeting tonight. Um, I would like to go ahead and start with our roll call. Um, Mrs. King, could you please do our roll call? Five Costin. Here. Akita Roger. Here. Great Tal. Here. Joel Ward. Here. 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 Thank you. Would you all please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and please remain standing for a moment of silence. Yes. I, here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, on your God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. We'll start with our routine business tonight. We, um, our first item is to approve the minutes of the February 14th, 2024 regular board, me regular board meeting. May I please get a motion? Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the February 14th, 2024 regular board meeting. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 The motion carries. Next, we have to approve and ratify our payroll and accounts payable vouchers. Could I get a motion, please? Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to approve and ratify accounts payable vouchers. Is there a second? I'll second. Um, all those in favor, please say aye for approving. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Mr. Narducci, is there correspondence tonight? Madam President, members of the board, there's no correspondence at this time. Thank you. We will now move into our student body um, reports, um, student body president reports. Tonight, uh, we'll start with from Castile High School, Riley Martinez. What's going on at Castile? Hi, good evening. Um, good evening, President, Superintendent Narducci, and board members and all of COSD. I'm Riley Martinez, and I'm the student body president at Castile High School. I'm honored to be presenting to you all today. Last time I was here, it was only the beginning of the second quarter. Now we're almost done with the third, and I'm happy to update you all on what we've been having at Castile since October. Our winter sports have had some of their best seasons yet. Wrestling debuted a new coach and performed with an almost perfect record. Losing only twice and placing top 10 in every tournament they competed in, they went above and beyond to prove how hard they've been working. Being a largely lower class team, we look forward to watching them continue to impress for years to come. Men's basketball is on a roll this year. Not only have they claimed the most wins in the program's history, but they're also the first to make open division. As we speak, they face Canyon View in the semifinals. We wish them the best of luck tonight and hopefully in the state championship. In addition to this, women's basketball has also soared to new heights. Starting off with a brand new coach, their season felt uncertain. Yet, they quickly developed a bond which led them to being the first women's basketball team to make open division in Castile's history. They easily turned over the previous regional record from 3-7 to seven to 7-3 seven to three this year. Way to go, women's basketball. And last but not least, both our men's and women's soccer teams have had great seasons, each ending in a narrow loss in the semifinals. The women scored over 70 goals and only led up five throughout the whole season. They finished third overall in 5A with an 8-2 record. Our men finished with an 11-1 to record and were region champions. We are so proud of our amazing soccer program, which never fails to impress us. Castile is unique in the sense that not only do we have an amazing athletics program, but an even better fine arts one. February is the busiest month for our incredible musicians at Castile. Recently, all our fine arts participated in their own regional festivals. To make the regional selections, these musicians must audition and place in the top 100 in their region. In total, we had 29 musicians make it across band, orchestra, and choir, which is extremely impressive in comparison to most other schools. While we love our fine arts, one we are particularly fond of is our amazing choir program, which I'm only partially biased towards. Of those regional qualifiers mentioned above, choir is responsible for 23 of them. More than that, we are proud to claim two first chairs, meaning they received the highest score in the district, sorry, in the region, Grant Clauston and myself. Another accomplishment is the record eight singers, which recently participated in the All-State Jazz and Show Festival at the beginning of February. We are even more proud of the two first chairs we had in the show choir, which is out of the entire state. These choirs are two of the most competitive in the state to make, and we wish to recognize the rarity that so many would be selected from one school. 
The Chamber Choir Encore was able to take part in the NAU Jazz and Magical Festival a few weeks ago. They earned a su two superior rankings and, per and a perfect score in jazz. It is no surprise that this was the same group that was selected to perform at the CUSD Elementary Choir Festival last week. If you can't tell, we are so proud of our choir program, which seems to continue to grow and improve each year. We truly are so fortunate to have the opportunity to attend a, such a school that emphasizes its fine arts just as much as any other extracurricular on campus. Next is my favorite event we put on this quarter, WINFO. About a month ago, we put on our very first winter formal themed Winter in NYC. It was so much fun as a council to focus on different ways to advertise and decorate for it because it was unlike most events we typically put on. We loved decorating our auxiliary gym with the special New York flair, which mostly meant decking hallways with newspapers, graffiti, and signs that said, I'm walking you. We had a, <laughs> such a great turnout and are looking forward to hosting more events like this in the future. As you can tell, this month has been busy for sure. Something else that happened in February was our Palm Cheer and Project 15 dance teams all complete competing at nationals in Florida and California. Cheer placed 25th in the nation with two zero deduction routines. They made it to the semifinals, which had never been done before. Before nationals, they had placed sixth in state. We cannot wait to see more of them this next year. Our amazing dance team, Project 15, placed first and second in regional competitions and ranked fourth in the nation for jazz at UDA nationals. We are so, so proud of them. And lastly, our fantastic Palm team won second and fourth in the nation. We love our cheer and dance departments at Castile. It's one of our favorite t traditions at Castile to host our Random Acts of Kindness Week, or RAC Week, the second week of February every year. Our very own Bring Change to Mind Club filled our school with kindness by suggesting random acts of service on the announcements and hanging up encouraging phrases around school. Our student council also puts every student and faculty, dem faculty member's name on hearts and puts them up for them to find. It is such a great way to spread love around our school. I believe everyone needs a rack week. Though we love to show our appreciation for our larger groups and events on campus, we also like to spotlight our accomplished individuals on campus. First, Catherine Pearson. Last time I was here, she was a semifinalist for the prestigious National Merit Scholarship Program, which requires a near perfect score in the ACT and ACT. Out of 16,000 semifinalists, she has now succeeded to the last round as a finalist. This is huge. We give her all our support as she continues to the final stages of the scholarship selection process. The second notable student is Tyler Hatch, who was awarded the Silver Apple Award for his well-rounded character in school and on the baseball team. He was acknowledged for truly embodying the three pillars of Castile, courage, character, and commitment as a classmate, teammate, and a student. Faculty members wish to congratulate him on maintaining a 4.3 GPA and starting varsity position all four years of high school. He truly is a model cult. Finally, I would like to recognize my amazing council for working so hard this quarter. In January, we participated along with the other high school councils in the 2024 CUSD Leadership Convention. This year was a little different because it was not themed like previous one, but just spirit-centered. We had so much fun tie-dyeing Castile colored shirts and wearing ribbons in our hair. We also enjoyed organizing stations and activities for the elementary kids. Let's just say my voice is still recovering from all those spirit wars. Well, that's about it for what's going on at Castile. Thank you so much for your time today, and I hope to see you at one of our many events we have planned to finish off this great year. Go Colts. Thank you. Thank you, Riley. We appreciate um, hearing all about what's going on at Castile. Thank you. Next we have, from Chandler High School, Lexi Moreno. What's going on at Chandler? Oh, that's my end slider. Oh, nah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sweet. Alrighty. Good, uh, good evening, Madam President, Mr. Radici, board members, and all of those in attendance. Thank you for having, having me this evening. My name is Lexi Moreto. I'm the student body president at Chandler High School this year. Uh, it's great to be back for the opportunity to report on the events and activities that we have going on on campus. Chandler has been very active, so I selected a, a handful of events that we've had. I'm very excited to show you guys what we've been up to. We had our winter assembly where students got to see performances from different clubs like our new STEP team, which has been a hit on campus in the community as well. They also participated in grade level games consisting of relay competitions, find an item, and musical chairs against teachers. Prior, uh, prior to this year, all of our assemblies have been sports based, and one goal our council has had this year has, uh, and has successfully carried out has been making sure that everybody at our school is included. 
um, by adding more time to our performances from clubs and games that consist of student and staff. Our last assembly and spare week of the year is this upcoming week, and our assembly is on Friday, so we hope to make it a good one. In December, we had our annual snow day with daycare. We partnered with Culinary to Bake Cookies for the kids to decorate before they headed out to the snow. Uh, we had so much fun taking them down the slide, as you can see. Um, and there's even a little additional pile of snow for them to hang out in. If they don't want to be on the slide, it can be a little daunting, even for high schoolers. It's very tall. Um, it's just so much fun to bond with them, especially since they're on campus right next to us. Um, even on my way to physics class, every now I get every now and then I get to say hi to my pal that I went down the slide with. So it's just a good way to connect with them um, at such an early age. And our annual uh, Unity Assembly was hosted by our Black Student Union, as well as our Ballet Folklore uh, Folkloreo Club. This year, we saw all sorts of performances from different individuals and clubs on campus of all backgrounds. This event was a great way to showcase our diversity on campus, as well as opportunities for students to learn about more programs and clubs that aren't always academically based. Uh, and it's just a great way to show our pride in our school as well. Our Model United Nations Club traveled to Boston to participate in the International Harvard Model UN Conference. Uh, the conference lasted three days in which they participated in different debates and discussions about various global issues with other students. Although it's a three-day conference, they travel for a whole week, filled with different bonding and learning activities, like taking the Freedom Trail in Boston, visiting Concord, Massachusetts, which is considered the birthplace of our nation, uh, where the shot around the world was fired, visiting John F. Kennedy Presidential Library and exploring the city on their own. I had the privilege of going on this trip and I vouch for when I say it's one of the best opportunities offered by one of the clubs on Chandler's campus. Um, during our free time, uh, my friends and I unexpectedly met Massachusetts, Massachusetts Senator uh, Ed Markey and it's just one of those opportunities that you get, like you can't get that anywhere else uh, besides Chandler. We're the only school in the state to travel to Harvard. Uh, we had so much fun at district convention. We didn't get a lot of pictures of our own, but those are the other student body presidents as well, as, one as, as well as our freshman uh, class president right there with some kids in a bonding activity. Um, CHS was in charge of arranging the assembly hosted by all high schools for the students, and we had a great time showing them different ways to bring leadership and school spirit to their campus. Two days prior, our council won the Outstanding Council of Distinction Award among all the schools in Arizona at the Arizona uh, Statewide Student Council Convention. This win in particular is very special to us since it's been a few years since we won one. The award is hung proudly in our classroom and next to our previously won awards. Our theater program has been on a roll this year. Last month, theater participated in the CEFT Regional Thespian Competition, where various members earned superior awards and feedback from awesome judges. They've also hosted a handful of events like a variety show, a Valentine's Day party, and they've got a new musical uh, for us. Opening tomorrow is Footloose at the Chandler Center for the Arts. I encourage you all to check it out. Tickets are available online and at the door. Our theater program works incredibly hard on all the events, and we'd love to have all of you in the audience. Uh, as we look forward to upcoming events, we have prom, senior sunset, and uh, great clash words, which was inspired by Castile. Uh, but thank you guys so much. Um, I also want to give a special thanks to my advisor, Ms. Amanda Osterman, although she isn't here tonight. Uh, but thank you. Thank you, Lexi, for keeping us up to date on what's going on at Chandler Valley. All right. Um, next, we have our superintendent's current events report. Mr. Manducci. Thank you, Madam President. Governing board members, last Wednesday was our annual district night of recognition. Uh, thank you for being there to deliver awards to 150 honorees. Thank you um, for the time that you put in that evening. For our community members, this event celebrates students, staff, and volunteers making a difference in COSD. Payne Junior High School Jazz Band, along with their school resource officer, provided the entertainment. And Fulton Elementary School student, Braylee Landis, uh, sang the uh, national anthem and the Chandler High Air Force Junior ROTC presented the colors. Um, smiles, cheers, and hope filled the air during this very special event. Uh, take a look at this short video to give you a little capture of what that night was. 
I would like to welcome everyone to the District Night of Recognition. Trey has stamped out as a model student at Hudson Elementary School with reflects of how he did the year expected in Robo Run is great and it can decide. Posthumously recognized Adelia Orr for her outstanding contributions and the indelible marks she left on the ACP High community. Accepting this honor on her behalf of Sid are her parents, Ed and Elena Orr. Yeah. I'm definitely seeking opportunities for personal and collective growth. <laughs> Leonidas contributes significantly to the school community, embodying kindness and thoughtfulness with a cheerful disposition. Actively engaged in school leadership, Joanna serves as an integral member of the Lighthouse team. Pamela genuinely vol generously volunteers her time alongside her sweet dog, Henley. Pamela creates a comforting and therapeutic environment for students. Elena found the day in all three of them, and he's fortunate to have her out in the team. I make the race feel good. Oh. It's been a wonderful evening. Thank you for joining us. Another excellent event featuring CUSD students and staff took place on Saturday. More than 140 exhibitors from CUSD schools and local technology companies participated in the Chandler Innovation Fair demonstrating the basics of science and the impact it has on your daily life. The fair is part of the Arizona SciTech Festival, a statewide movement to promote and celebrate science in our daily lives and to earn recognition for Arizona as a science and technology hub. After com com uh, competing in the Chandler Innovation Fair, many CUSD students go on to compete in the state festival. Hamilton student Prisha Schroff and Alex Hong were the best and fair winners. Prisha won in the physical sciences category and Alex won in the biological sciences category. Congratulations to every student who participated. To explain the history of the Chandler Innovation Fair, here is the latest episode of the Superintendent's Focus series. Hi, I'm Shannon Prince, and I'm one of the science academic coaches for the Chandler Unified School District. Shannon, you can sense from the excitement in the air at our schools uh, about something called the Chandler Innovation Fair. Tell us how this partnership came together. For many, many years, we were having our Hamilton Invitational Science and Engineering Fair at Hamilton High School. This is our traditional fair where students from 5th through 12th grade get to enter a, a science fair project. And that's what's happening the same time as the Chandler, city of Chandler was having their own science fair at the same time. And that happened for quite a many years. And then we realized, hey, if we join forces and get this great partnership, we can create the Chandler Innovation Fair and make that available for the whole community and all students across Chandler. But we realized that there's a really different pathways into STEM careers now, and we needed to diversify our projects. So now we offer five additional projects, problem-based learning, um, invention convention, computer science, robotics, and STEAM fine arts. Shannon, thank you for sharing all of this information. It's just so interesting how all of this goes right along with our new strategic plan that's coming out, especially in the year, our goal one of quality teaching and learning and, and innovative organizations too. Uh, what, what I'm so excited about is that we're not just teaching knowledge, we're, we're actually asking our kids to apply knowledge through a systems thinking and a project-based learning, which will allow them to learn deeper. Can you share a project that possibly showcases that? Yes, we have a great project from Fry Elementary, a fifth grade team, where they were working on solutions to real world problems. And so they, the real world problem they were identifying was, how can you use playground equipment when it's too hot outside? So this team, they worked cooperatively together they came up with a to a consensus with a final design. They made sketches. They made materials list. And then the really cool thing that they got to do is they got to go visit the a ASU Chandler Innovation Center, where they got to be inspired by the cool work that's going on over there. I love how I just heard you're, you're incorporating our port portrait of the learner uh, traits, adaptability, right? I, I heard critical thinking, communication. I heard 
collaboration, right? So our, our traits are being blended right in there with the innovative learning. So uh, that's amazing. I can't wait to see the project. So as you can see, there's like some blue wires going around my project. And those blue wires represent the cooling system that's supposed to be inside. So like, so, so in summer, the monkey bars are not hot. And in winter, the monkey bars are warm. So if you see this roof on top, it is supposed to protect, like, it's supposed to protect the cooling system from any damages because of how hot the monkey bars can be. So it's like a teamwork. Like the shade, like, makes it cooler so then the monkey bars can make it even cooler. If this would come into real life, I would, like, make some, like, different design. So I would, like, make some, like, prototype, like, some prototypes and then I would put, like, water in them, and then I would put, like, air conditioner in them to see which one works best. Okay, so then you would test a bunch of, uh, of different prototypes later to see how you can improve your design. Yes, sir. Absolutely amazing, and keep up the good work, because then we're going to see you doing great stuff. Thank you. That's, that's absolutely fantastic. Thank you for the energy you put behind this. I know that you have a tall effort leading our science department across a K-12 district, and I want to thank you for all of the involvement that you've had in making sure that our, our kids are successful in presenting and that our schools are successful in creating opportunities for our students to be at this level. Well, thank you. For those interested in the audience, um, who they'll may be available in 10 to 14 years for for uh, employment or, or, or for uh, enrollment if you're with universities, um, I was just amazed by that kid. He was, he just took it from there and there was no script he was going by and I, it was just amazing kids. So a lot, that represents a lot of our kids. Tonight, there was a walk around our district office to honor and remember Preston Lord. To everyone who attended, thank you for being here. We extend our hearts and our sorrow to the Lord family and all victims of senseless violence. This is not easy for anyone. Many times schools and districts are tasked with finding solutions to complex issues. While Chandler Unified is the second largest district with 43,000 students and with 5,200 employees, our boundaries sp span um, 80 square miles and including Chandler, Gilbert, and Queen Creek. COSD schools are anchors and our high schools in some ways are like small cities. Our students make up much of the student population in the East Valley, as do students from many other high schools. This is why the solution to teen violence cannot rest solely on the shoulders of schools and districts, but instead requires a collaborative effort with parents and community partners. Please know, community members, we have heard you and desire to work with you. That is why I'm using the rest of the current event report to elaborate on our supportive measures COSD has taken. The Speak Up for Safety Anonymous tip line is on the front page of all COSD websites. Students, families, and the community may email, text, or call this anonymous line to report bullying, planned fights, students in crisis, threats of violence, weapons brought to school, and other urgent situations. You can access that line right now by scanning the QR code on our website. At the last board meeting, we shared with you that stickers with the QR code are immediately being added to student IDs. This QR code takes anyone who scans it straight to the counseling and social services page where all the phone numbers and emails are clickable from a phone. For next school year, we are pursuing ways to add the code to student IDs permanently. We know that it is vital to share the tip line often, and you'll see that more present in our schools. We continue to evaluate and identify training for our staff. As educators, we are lifelong learners and should be continuously refining our skills. Uh, for example, a team of COSD educators from all 44 schools, every single school in our district, recently attended a training to learn about providing a supportive environment for students experiencing grief. We have, this officially made COSD the first grief-sensitive school district in Arizona. COSD also participates yearly in the Arizona Threat Assessment Training. We're committed to finding even more learning opportunities for our educators be it in child brain development, youth mental health, bullying, substance abuse, conflict resolution, et cetera. We also need help from our families. What happens at home is just as important as what happens on campus. For that reason, we strive to offer classes on informational meetings for parents and families on many topics. For instance, last week, our prevention coordinator shared with families of students at 10 of our school sites a free voluntary opportunity that provided learning modules for parents experiencing challenges with their students in areas like vaping, drug use, 
bullying, depression, and isolation. A few of our elementary schools recently hosted parent nights featuring experts in these areas, and we will continue to share learning opportunities with families to create unified support for our students. The pressing issue of teen violence is statewide and nationwide, and it is a concern across the board. We want the community to know that we are committed to doing what is best for kids. CU staff, CUSD staff members care about kids. School is where our students spend much of their day, so it's imperative that we continue to create safe and nurturing environments. Every year, CUSD issues a climate survey to students in grades 4th through 12th grade. While we're still analyzing this year's school's data, we can share with you that nearly 85% of our students responded that the climate of their school is positive and they feel cared for about school. This survey question had a 99% return rate. However, we know that there is a subset that shared something different. We plan to explore the why behind that difference, and we promise that. Our community has shared that our website can be challenging to navigate. The site is currently undergoing a total redesign to go live early next school year. In the interim, we will adjust the existing site to make important content more prominent. Additionally, your feedback will help to ensure that moving forward, counseling resources, policies, emergency man management operations flowcharts are more easily accessible by the community. We're also, we also understand the importance of effective, constant, and consistent communication. We believe our commitment in this area is evident with the onboarding of a new unifying school to home communication tool called ParentSquare. ParentSquare is web and app based. It allows for messages to be sent via email, text, and voice calling. With ParentSquare, families will have control over when and how they receive messages. And this includes automatic translation in the family's preferred home language. And as you know, we have 62 of those. This tool is being piloted as I speak at 10 COSD schools and will be used district-wide by July of 2024. And that said, to evaluate efforts already ongoing and to consider information and feedback shared with us, a teen violence advisory committee will be formed. This advisory will be made up of parents and guardians of students in COST schools, as well as industry uh, professionals, medical professionals, law enforcement, faith-based nonprofit, and community. We will model this committee after our mental health advisory, which has been key in our schools addressing mental health head on. After spring break, you will see messaging about the development of this advisory. And as you know, to ensure that the advisory is done appropriately, we will need time to build it. We envision this group helping us address matters including smartphone usage, social media and video game dangers, bullying, and harassment. Additionally, the, the committee was, uh, has the potential to further vet resources and recommendations sent to COSD. Along with the work of this advisory committee, we can also reach out to our neighboring districts for models that we can learn from. We must not forget our students' voice. It is very powerful. At the start of this school year, we initiated a student advisory to address the mental well-being of our youth. At the advisory's last meeting, I asked the students about expanding our advisory model to address bullying and violence. Students responded enthusiastically and were very supportive to take this measure on. I do see at times that the both committees coming together. We understand there is a strength that there is strength in numbers. For that reason, we desire to unite to unite with our cities and towns in support of addressing teen violence. By working together as a district with our community, with our students, and with our families, we can all be a positive part of this solution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Narducci. Our next um, agenda item is our citizens' comments. Um, Ms. Ingersoll, could you please um, read our This is the comments. time for the public to comment. Members of the board may not discuss items that are not specifically identified on the agenda. Therefore, pursuant to ARS 38431.01H, at the conclusion of the open call to the public, Individual members of the public body may respond to criticism made by those who have addressed the public body, may ask staff to review a matter, or may ask that a matter be put on a future agenda. However, 
members of the public body shall not discuss or take legal action on matters raised during an open call to public unless the matters are properly noticed for discussion and legal action. Thank you, Ms. Singerson. Our first speaker is Katie McPherson of Queen Creek. Why, for which I need to Oh, um, we have, um, uh, Katie, um, could you please go over to that podium? All of our speakers will be from there for public comments. Um, each speaker has two minutes. We have 11 um, speakers tonight. Excuse me, Gal. Okay. Good evening, Madam President and esteemed board members. We as parents have proposed a 10-point safety plan. It sounds like you heard it. I'm excited for the Teen Advisory Violence Committee to start. I'm asking, however, that employees of CUSD be held accountable when students report crimes as mandated by state and federal laws. Zach Plunk was my former fifth grade student. He reported being sexually assaulted in the Hamilton locker room in 2016 to 2018. In 2020, after five transfers of schools, running from the PTSD and abuse he endured under your watch, he was found in a bush in front of his home. He had bought one pill on Snapchat and died, died of a fentanyl poisoning. The seven teenage girls that I advocated for in May of 23, they were touched by a 67-year-old teacher on your watch. In the middle of the night, he mysteriously left our campus with no knowledge to parents or staff under the advisement of Dr. Jeff Falloon and Dr. Wendy Nance. My child, who was asked to give oral sex in the auditorium of the high school at age 12, I reported this to you, and it took me 18 months to meet with you. The employees that allowed that were not reprimanded or terminated. The termination of the employee that allowed that came with a resignation of he and his secretary's resignation in September of 23. Preston Lord's death has peeled back a veil of the evil among us. We are A plus set of parents that deserve A plus respect for our children. Transferring employees to other sites is unacceptable and pretending that the goons don't exist is also unacceptable. We are in a deep crisis and triage. The conditions and environment for, for passive corruption and willful neglect. Let's uh... Our next is Shannon Carnahan of Queen Creek. I'm Shannon Carnahan, and uh, my family ha is four generations deep in Chandler. Went to Chandler High, the whole family did. Um, I had a daughter at Castile and that had to move to Basha because of the circumstances there. But then I also have a daughter that went to Perry and did a beautiful mural on the wall in, in the art hallway. Um, I'm here because something's got to change in this district. And I have a letter here that I wrote May 17th of 2022 um, to Dan Serrano, Craig Gilbert, and Frank Narducci, in which if anybody would like a copy of this, you guys are welcome to have it. On May 4th, tw uh, 2022, my daughter was involved in what was known as the vaping incident at Castile. My daughter was pressured in the bathroom to take hits of devices that other girls provided. This ended up being tested by Queen Creek PD and resulted in the items containing nicotine and THC. These girls were all named by my daughter as she ended up in the nurse's office high. I received a call from the nurse asking me to come to school because she wasn't holding her vitals and having voluntary, having involuntary movements. My daughter was able to describe everything and provide names of everyone and was honest and forthcoming about the incident. While I was in the health office, several other students came in and the same symptoms as my daughter. Present was my daughter. 30 dad, seconds. Ryan Ridnauer, Joey Perry, Chalamet, April Vallier, and the nurse. There were unfamiliar faces and several medics, eventually other parents. As her vitals became stable, I decided to take her home to let her rest. 
she was sick and experiencing with withdrawal symptoms for days. In addition to this, this day and days surrounding it, there were reports of overdoses, people passing out in classes, um, in bathrooms, students having fentanyl, students using fentanyl, students harming themselves in the bathroom. Time has expired. There. Okay. My and year clear. Not the Our next speaker is Bridget Vega from Gilbert. Good evening. I pray to God that with the tip line, you actually do something. Actions speak louder than words. Stop covering up sexual assault, violence, and drugs going on on the campuses. Be an upstander. If you see something, say something, do something. Rise up, Chandler. If we can take a moment of silence for Preston Lord, the youth that have been assaulted physically, mentally, and sexually, and for all the youth that has been murdered due to senseless acts of violence. Justice for the you more than the youth. Our next speaker is Christine Brennan of Gilbert. Hello. Um, I'm Christine Brennan from Gilbert. So we ask for honest feedback from CUSD students. We can share that feedback, but all students did. Uh, they requested to stay anonymous in fear of retaliation. So we are here to be their voices. These two are both from Perry High School. Hi, I'm a student at Perry High School, which is in CUSD. I'd like to talk to you today about the problems we have on campus from a student's perspective and what we can do to solve these issues. The number one priority for our students should be our safety. Sadly, we cannot feel safe when we have kids who have been in gang style attacks walking in the halls with us. How can we focus? Me, along with other students, can't and won't use the bathrooms due to drugs and vapes being used in there. As a student, you won't hear about many things. Um, excuse me. As a student, you hear about many things, and I will say the things that I've heard are horrifying and not okay. Rapes, sexual assaults, gang style attacks, stuff being laced, houses being vandalized, and so much more that is too graphic to share. So many students deal with the trauma due to this inexcusable behavior and it keeps on happening due to the lack of consequences. We deserve so much better. We need better resources, we need trusted adults, and we need to get the drugs off of our campus. We should never have to be scared of going to the bathrooms. I want to feel safe, and I also want to feel heard. Teachers and staff also want to feel heard. Teachers and staff also need to be mindful of the mandatory report reporting. 30 seconds. No girl or boy should ever have to deal with the sexual assaults and sexual violence that happens on and off campus. It terrifies me. I know I can speak for many when I say that. We should prioritize all students equally. 
Please hear us out and help us create a better environment. Sadly, if you don't, the blood will be on your guys' hands. This needs to be a priority. I can't read every all of the reviews. I don't have enough time. Um, but I will say these students are in the schools that you've accepted responsibility and has expired. Listen to them. Please do better. Please be better. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ryan Heap. Good evening, members of the board and administration. Uh, first, uh, I would like to acknowledge and thank the board for serving uh, the CUSD community. Uh, it's a tremendous responsibility and your service and sacrifice largely goes unnoticed and unappreciated. And while I may not agree with all the decisions and the, di the direction the district um, is heading, I am thankful for your service um, to the CUSD community. Second, uh, to everyone here who's been impacted by teen violence, I express my sincere heartfelt condolences. Um, <clears throat> I do not pretend to know the depth nor the gravity of your pain or your anger, your, uh, excuse me, your sorrow. I just pray that uh, healing will come and that as uh, a community, we can uh, rally around each other and for love and support. And to the board, I echo the sentiments of many, safety and accountability must be your top priority. Lastly, um, on a more positive note, I did come here to give out a shout to the choir teacher at Castile High School, Mrs. Cammie Clausen, and to plead with this board that uh, you get their um, PAC speakers fixed ASAP. Uh, I was going to tell you how awesome Castile Choir Program is, but Riley Martinez beat me to the punch. 30 seconds. Um, we don't have a Cammie Clausen Street yet, uh, but she is getting her choir program into the Super Bowl year after year, the Corral Super Bowl. Castile's PA, uh, PAC speaker system has been down since November, and in five days they have their spring musical concert. So please be a board of action, an administration of action, and get those speakers fixed. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Brett Wingate of Chandler. Members of the board, <clears throat> I am I'm here to talk to you about the uh, the fair, but also some other comments as as I've listened. Um, a couple of things I've reserved for you the table at the fair, and I was really impressed with what I saw with your CTE. I think that you you've worked uh, in a number of areas for, for improvements, and I would ask that you you try and highlight that um, during your tabling event. Um, but it struck me. <laughs> Um, listening to a number of these comments, um, how much things haven't changed. Uh, one of the reasons that uh, my family chose to go a different direction when um, I was, you know, uh, school, uh, school president and uh, PTO president, that type of thing. But we chose to go to a different school, and part of it was um, the fact that uh, my children uh, well, one of my children, was bullied consistently. And this is 30 years ago. Um, and it, it is incumbent on us, and I take that as us in, in general, to really address the concerns of parents. When parents come forward and ask you to respond, they're not trying to be punishing you. They're trying to give you a plea. And that plea is, my child is hurt. It is uh, a year that I've been coming to your meetings, and in that year I have heard uh, of the events that happened with the uh, female students um, at Perry High School, um, the, the events that uh, made Jewish students feel uncomfortable and um, out, of, uh, out of sorts, uh, and parents expressed that, and now um, this egregious uh, activity that has happened uh, regarding Preston Lord, Red and these are not these are not people trying to get other than your attention. 
Merci. Oui. Thank you. Our next is Rosa Reyes of Gilbert. Um, sorry, this is my first time ever doing this. Um, you guys have set up some really awesome tools in regards to bullying. I love that. I hope you guys use the information you get from it wisely. Um, however, my concern here tonight is about the principle of Riggs Elementary. Um, I have a child that attends there, and um, I do not feel comfortable with how it is being handled. The fact that she still remains the principal, though on leave, is questionable to me, especially considering that they preach integrity and accountability when she can't even have that in her own life. So how can I expect her to lead my child in that? I don't feel comfortable having someone like that in my child's life. I know for myself that if she remains principal, that I will rule over my child. And I know I'm not the only parent who feels that way. Our children deserve people with integrity and who will take accountability for their actions, even when it's hard, even when they know if they've done something wrong. It, our kids deserve better than that. Yeah. If she is, is reinstated to her position. We will 30 seconds. Out. Thank you. Our next is Lindsay, Lindsay Listow? Listow. Listow, okay, of Gilbert. My name is Lindsay Listow, and I want us to start off by thanking all of the board members who attended the Gilbert Subcommittee on Monday, and a special thank you to Patty Serrano for thanking us for actually being there. We asked students of CUSD to give honest experiences that, they, that we would keep anonymous. We received many praising ACP, which was great to see. We did receive one not in favor of the food. The rest of the reviews received were identical. One reads, and you'll totally be able to tell this is genuine and from a, a, a teenage boy, there are always fights in the bathroom. They get old, so we all wait till we get home. Like, bro, I gotta pee. If you try and jump in, you'll have a mark on your back, so no one does anything. It's not funny, you know. I'm not violent or like that, but what are we supposed to do? I never reported it because I just thought this is what happens at school. But now I see it ain't normal, and I wish I would have said something. Another was from a parent's perspective. My son left to school due to all the fights and drugs. He literally couldn't use the restroom all day every day because kids were always in there, or the locker room smoking or fighting, and you couldn't go in or you'd be beat up or harassed. I talked to admin a couple times. They said they didn't have staff to monitor every bathroom all the time and that my kid must be exaggerating that it couldn't be that bad. They should have seen my son when I picked him up every day at 2.15 just frantic to get home to use the restroom. Another submitted from a parent states, I shared some very positive feedback about one high school, but this is another high school entirely. The bathrooms at Hamilton are consistently filled with vaping and other drug use. Also at Hamilton, lunch for people who don't have people to sit with, sometimes they're targeted by other kids and harassed. Those kids seconds. have been seen hiding out eating lunch in the bathroom stalls to avoid being picked on. Maybe have a safe space for kids to eat lunch peacefully when they don't feel safe in general cafeteria. Across the board, the consensus is there is major issues in the bathrooms. Programs like e-hall pass and away for the day would give students a small peace of mind to do something as simple as using the restroom. Increased SRO security and bathroom sweeps combined with holding offenders accountable will combat safety issues in the schools. Thank you. Thank you. Teresia Arnold of Gilbert. Did I pronounce your first name correctly? Carissa. Okay. I'm following up to Chris Brennan and just reading a couple testimonies from kids from uh, Perry High School. As a Perry High School student, I truly believe that we, the students, and the teachers matter the most. I've been a witness to many teachers at Perry saying they do not feel safe on campus maybe because of the smell of drugs that goes through our hallway, hallways on a daily. That's an example of what they have to go through on a daily basis. Students and teachers don't deserve such a thing. They deserve to walk on campus and feel safe and not to be amongst kids who have been in attacks. 
I wish I could be here speaking, but I can't due to my safety, which is sad to say. As I know many other speech, speeches are about the students, I think the teachers who have to feel uneasy every day matter just as much. All I'm asking is for you guys to hear them out and also to give a chance to speak. They deserve to have a say in this as much as we do. It starts with you, the board, to help us create an envi safe environment. Thank you. From another student. I think there are good teachers, but when the protected kids do something in class, the teachers can't do anything about it. The whole town, whole school knows which kids are protected, and they walk around knowing they can do whatever they want, so they bully kids on purpose. Many of those kids are doing something with drugs. We see it all over SC, and they talk crap on the teachers. Thank you. Anna Salagis of Gilbert. Good evening, Madam President, Superintendent, Superintendent Narducci, and board members. As a mom and teacher in CUSD, I urge you to imp implement the away for a day for the day policy where students turn their phones off during school hours. It is imperative that we as adults follow the science and research that plainly shows that social media has created a public health crisis among our children. The major pushback for this policy change is often out of concern for a possible emergency and students not being able to contact their parents. Children are left in our care for six hours, five days a week, and we are the adults that monitor their safety and care. Imagine it like going back, as the kids say, back into the 1900s. <laughs> <laughs> They're lovely. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I taught you the sign for community. Do you guys remember it? Community. So let's see, um, I'm gonna teach you another one, connection, connection. This two-handed sign represents two people coming together, creating a circle, a bond, connection. There are two reasons why I teach you the signs for words. One reason is because ASL is a way of showing beautifully the meaning of a word. Sometimes words lose their meaning when the word isn't backed up by action. ASL shows that action. When you see the sign community, that reminds you that community requires actions from many. The other reason is because Preston Lord's aunt expressed that when she thinks of Preston, 30 seconds. she thinks of his hands and that we have a choice to use our hands for good or bad. His life was taken from people doing evil and violent acts with their hands. As all are aware, many other teens have been assaulted in the same manner. The violent acts included not only fists, brass knuckles, but holding a phone in their hands and recording. ASL requires full eye contact, full awareness of the person in front of you. I believe that's what's lacking in our community today. Time has Full expired. Full awareness of the person in front of you. It could be that servant. And the white thing seems to be Thank you. Our next is Coulter Landry. Any. Is there option? You may need to raise the microphone a little bit. That there? Um, we'll get someone to help you. Oh. Sure. Here he says, Yeah, pretty much. In 2017, I report being sexually assaulted in school by other students with Gilbert. And I told my senior high principal, he said that he would investigate. We would, we waited and waited. After 30 days, we went back to the principal for some kind of communication. He did nothing. The abuse continued. It occurred in PE, the locker room, and during lunchtime, I reported it to the police as well, and nobody did anything. We met with the superintendent. Nothing changed. I changed schools, hoping it would stop with the boys change schools due to closing as well. They continued to target me. Despite IDA law, IDEA law, I was not protected. The gang got bigger, and no one stopped them they showed me porn PE and the boy admitted he did it I got punched in the face in school no one took action yes. thank you for clarification I did want you to know that the young man who spoke is not a current or former student of Chandler Unified School District so I'll be, uh, thank you 
That is the end of our, um, that is the end, that is the end of our citizen comments at this point. Let's talk to us, sir, but we there. I'm sorry. That's so good to do. Next, we will go on to our consent agenda. And staff. Sorry, guy. Mr. Narducci. Yes, Madam President, members of the board, we would like to um, present to you the consent agenda as printed and as approved, um, as written and published. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion to approve our consent agenda? Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented and published. Is there a second? Good. I'll second that work. Thank you. Are those in favor of approving our consent agenda? Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right, motion carries. Next, we move on to our action items, and this is, uh, we're looking at the revision of the 2021 and 22, and 22-23 budget and annual financial report. Mrs. Berry. Madam President, members of the board, the district is requesting to make expenditure budget and annual financial report revisions that do not include changes in actual expenditures or adjustments to state aid but are required to follow the process defined in ARS 15-915. The revised expenditure budget and AFR require board approval and signatures. The fiscal year 22 expenditure budget revision number three reflects two adjustments, which will result in an increased expenditure capacity. On page seven, line 3A, the MNL override was originally reported in the amount of $40,373,174 and was based on the prior year ADM report and the support level weights that were not yet adjusted at the time the proposed budget was submitted in June, on June 23, 2021. With the issuance of Budge, 20, Budge 75 on January 31, 2023, ADE's calculated m override included these adjustments and totaled $40,866,981 for a difference of $493,807. In addition, on page 7, line 5A, the tuition revenue total reported by CUSD was $75,000, while ADE reported $112,827 for a difference of $37,827. This year, 22 expenditure budget revision number three reflects a total increased expenditure capacity of $531,000. $634. The fiscal year 23 expenditure budget revision number three reflects one adjustment, which will result in an increased expenditure capacity. On page seven, line three, the MNL override was originally reported in the amount of $43,630,224 and was based on the prior year ADM reported and the support level weights that were not year adjusted at the time the proposed budget was submitted on June 22, 2022. With the issuance of Budge 75 on November 21st, 2023, ADE's calculation, calculated MNL override included these adjustments and totaled $44,579,030 for a difference of $948,806. Fiscal year 22 expenditure budget revision number three reflects a total increased expenditure capacity of $948,806. The fiscal year 22 and 23 AFI revisions reflect the above expenditure budget adjustment. The overall increased expenditure capacity carried forward will be included in the 24 totals of $1,480,440. Board approval is requested. Thank you, Mrs. Berry. Uh, could I please get a motion for this? I move um, fiscal year 22 and 23 AFR revisions. Um, in the amount of $1,480,440 be approved. Second. Are there any questions or comments from uh, for Mrs. Barry or any discussion? Thank you. All right, um, if no additional questions, um, um, all those in favor of this, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. 
Next, we have an action regarding the hearing officer's decision and recommendation in the matter of Patrick Galloway on teacher dismissal proceedings. Uh, could I get a motion, please? Madam President, I'd like to make a motion to um, accept and uh, go forward with the action um, approved. Mr. Mr. Olive, there is a recommended action on the screen oh on this item. Hang on, somebody else do this for me then. But Madam President, I move yes. to recommend termination of contract with Patrick Galloway, teacher, and dismiss him from his employment for COD. Is there a second? Second. Is it um, all those in favor of um, the motion? Please say aye. Aye. Um, aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Next, we're going to move on to our board agenda roadmap. Our next meeting is on March 27th. We only have one meeting in March due to uh, spring break, and we will be having a uh, study session on our trust policy model. And um, at that point, we'll be also looking at uh, some recommendations uh, for that trust, uh, the trust policy transition. So we will go to board member current events. Let's start with uh, Mr. Rars. Okay. Um, on February 16th, I think some of the parents alluded to this, but um, the town of Gilbert had their subcommittee on teen violence. It was well attended by parents. I thought it was a pretty substantial discussion. Um, the parents were, I believe, respectful. There was an open dialogue. And I think they generally desire to help and to be included. Um, in, in spite of some of the emotion here, parents should be our allies, not our adversaries. We should listen to them. They're afraid. They're afraid for their kids, and nobody cares more about the kids than these parents. And I think we have to take that into account when they're talking to us. Um, I would also suggest that um, the Gilbert meeting was more like a town hall. They just let the parents speak. I think we should do the same thing so in more of an open session in a town hall format and, and let them speak for as long as they want. I think most of the parents out there generally want solutions and are willing to work on them. Um, they can tell by the plan that you know was submitted to you. So perhaps we can uh, proceed in that manner. Um, on the 15th of February, state of the city, um, mayor delivered. He did talk about uh, growth and career development for our kids. I think they realize that the workers that they're going to need tomorrow for their economic growth are in our schools today, and we're absolutely connected to, to that future. Um, on March 7th, there's a vote for tomorrow, a career, career event at 5 o'clock at Channel High School, and this is part of the whole CTE program. This is um, pretty much the culmination of it, where we present the kids their future careers. Last thing is um, tonight, basketball semifinal. Alien Marshall tipped off at 8 o'clock. Not going to be able to make that one. Um, but I'll be trying to follow that one on my phone. These are two very, very good teams, and one of them is going to the final next week. So thank you. Mr. Holif, do you have anything? Uh, just one thing I wanted to note, um, and and I wouldn't be, and I wouldn't know that much about it if my if I didn't have a student that was associated with the soccer team over at uh, Perry High School. They uh, just won their second state championship in a row. That's very unusual to be able to do that. And um, and like all like all the other sports teams, I mean, these guys, you know, the sports teams that are good and that that succeed. Um, get get make it to state or get close to making it to state. It's because they they learn um, teamwork and teamwork and hard work and and they uh, do it um, for do do this stuff for their team. And so that's a really great thing. We're gonna hopefully get to celebrate here pretty soon. 
uh, that was all I had for today. Thank you, Mr. Alvarez. Ms. Serena? Sure. Good evening, everyone. Um, well, my family had an eventful weekend in our CUSD community. I shared a little bit about things coming up at our last meeting. And we started our weekend Friday night um, with me taxiing a car full of excited Puma basketball student supporters that even included some Huskies uh, celebrating Perry's win to advance to state semifinals where, as uh, board member Roars alluded, they're facing our very own Basha Bears. So amazing. I can't wait to get home and see what my kid has to report. Um, then Saturday, I got to witness CSD's excellence at our Chandler Innovation Fair. I want to share, I've been to this fair in the past. My son actually was a recipient when he was in fifth grade. So tonight's video was really special to me. But y'all, we blew it out of the water this year completely. So if you were unable to attend um, or if you've never attended, I want to extend a very big invitation for next year. You will not regret it. In fact, I would say plan on staying longer than you think you're going to stay because there's just so much to see, do, particularly for young children. It was so interactive and I couldn't get to all of the booths that I wanted to just to observe. Um, I think our schools represented over 80 booths um, filled with volunteers, students, parents. I ran into a niece I didn't even know was going to be there checking, um, uh, I think, blood pressure with HOSA. So again, um, try to look out for that next year if you've never experienced it. it it's completely worth it. From there, I checked over to Chandler High to participate in the Black Student Leadership Summit and Community Fair, along with our BSU Students Black History Celebration. That was all joy, music, food, and a lot of pride that I was happy to be a part of. Uh, looking ahead, I do wanna highlight two events, one very important academic opportunity and one fine arts opportunity that we heard about at Castile. So Tuesday, sorry, Thursday, March 7th, from five to seven at Chandler High, we will be hosting our Build for Tomorrow Expo. This is for grades nine through 12. And the goal of this event is to showcase employment and job opportunities for students, as well as technical and career programs. But we will also have people available to answer some questions related to path to higher education. I note this because I understand the panic that is out there right now with the delay on the FAFSA. So if you are a parent with a student starting college next year and you have concerns and don't feel you're getting answers right now, this might be a good opportunity for you to come and learn a little bit more about what's going on. There have been extensions for deadlines and it's important to understand those extensions. Um, as we heard tonight, Castile Junior High Spring Concert will be held on Monday, March 4th at 7 p.m. And the High School Spring Concert will be on Tuesday, March 5th at 7 p.m. So um, a great opportunity to support our students, treat yourself, treat your years. Um, obviously, we have a lot of talent coming out of Castile's choir, and I hope um, some of us can be there to support them. Thank you, Patty. Mr. Worth, do you have anything for tonight? Okay. Um, I wanted to say that I had visited um, some more of our elementary schools, uh, met with the principal, talked with them, and got to see all the wonderful things that are going on um, in those schools. Um, the students have been absolutely amazing. Um, the dual language programs and the um, just the the science and the the math that they're learning, and I'm just amazed at, at what some of these students are doing in our in our classrooms. Um, I think our teachers are doing a fantastic job of of um, getting our students uh, collaborating in groups and and learning how to communicate with each other, and also learning um, the basics of of mathematics and reading and writing. So. Um, that's pretty much all I have. Um, I want to remind all the board members that we need some signatures from everybody this evening. And um, for the um, 
past year budgets, budget revisions. And with that, um, this meeting is adjourned. Do you need